again, Donna here, your homegrown gourmet, part of the Gourmet or Good Enough team with my sister Diane. Today I'm doing corned beef for St. Patty's Day. Now I usually make it on top of the stove in simmering water for like three, four hours, but today I thought I'd do something different. I'm going to braise my corned beef in the oven, low and slow, and then I'm going to serve it with Kalkanen potatoes. Those are mashed potatoes that are flavored with sauteed onion, cabbage, and bacon. So let's get started. So to start, I have about a two and a half pound corned beef, locally grown and butchered, and it's just brined. There's no pickling spice in it. It's a flat cut. The point is okay, but it's kind of fat on one end and then uh, thinner on the other side. This is a more even thickness, so it'll make nice slices. I have a heavy duty Dutch oven. And I'm going to layer it with some cubed carrots, a couple cubed onions, and that's going to be like our base. They don't have to be fancy cut because it's all going to cook really slow with the braising liquid. Next thing I want to do is place my corned beef on top. Now this corned beef, I rinsed it really, really well. It's important to do that. We want to get rid of all that extra salt. It has permeated the meat and we don't want to add that extra salt. So that gets rinsed really well and pat it dry. Next, I want to brush on some mustard and I'm using a Dijon mustard. I'm just going to brush it on the top. Now if this had a really thick fat cap, because some of them do, I might make a couple slashes in it, like a crisscross pattern, so that it would permeate through that layer. And then I want to sprinkle a little bit of brown sugar on top. And I usually use like equal parts brown sugar and mustard. And then lastly, I want to sprinkle on like a tablespoon of my pickling spice. You can find pickling spice in the baking aisle, or you can make your own. And I found a great recipe online and I'm going to tell you what it's, what's in here. And believe it or not, I had all of these ingredients. Some of them came from my own garden. So this calls for one cinnamon stick that you break in half, two bay leaves that are crushed, two whole cloves, two tablespoons of mustard seed, two tablespoons coriander seed, two teaspoons of allspice, two teaspoons of dill weed, and then one teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Okay, so you sprinkle that all on top. Next, we need to add some braising liquid. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this off to the side. Braising liquid calls for, of course, I'm gonna do mine in Irish beer. And I'm trying uh, this new product from Guinness, Baltimore <laughs> Brewed, so that's why I'm using it. And it's a nice red beer, I love it. So we have two pints, and that's going in my pot. I have one cup of water. For a little extra flavor, I'm gonna add some beef base. And I like to use this better than bouillon because it has a really good, rich flavor, and I can depend on it. I'm using, oh, a nice uh, rounded, maybe two teaspoonful. We're gonna put this on the stove and bring it to a boil, and that's really important, because if I were to pour this on top of my brisket right now and then throw it in the oven, the gas from the alcohol would cause it to bubble up and foam up, and, and it could cause quite a mess, so we don't wanna do that. So by boiling it, that gets rid of all of that uh, foaminess, and then we can add it to our brisket. So let me go ahead and take care of that. Well, my cooking liquid has boiled, and I'm going to go ahead and add it to my pot. We don't want to submerge this completely in liquid. We want it to just come up. There we go. I think that's pretty darn good. So next I cover it tightly with foil. and then put on my lid so that it's doubly secure. This is going in the oven 275, like I said, low and slow. A good rule of thumb is to cook your corned beef about one hour per pound or 180 to 190 internal temperature. 
so it's good to get an instant read thermometer. Since mine is only about two and a half pounds, I'm going to check it after about two hours. To make calcanum potatoes, I have some potatoes simmering on top of the stove, and I've cooked about four slices of bacon, crisp, putting that on a paper towel to drain. And I want to save about oh, a couple of tablespoons of bacon grease to saute my onion and my cabbage. So I have too much in there right now. I don't want to wait for it to cool. I don't want to bother with a spoon. I'm just going to use a paper towel so I can suck up some of that. It works really well for me. And I can just take this paper towel and pitch it. Now I'm going to take some sliced red onion. I'm going to give it, give my dish a lot of color. We're just going to saute this till translucent. My onions are nice and soft. Now I want to add a half head of shredded cabbage. We are going to saute this till the cabbage gets nice and soft. Our potatoes are done and they're really hot right now. So I'm going to add them to a bowl. I have some warmed milk and butter. We're going to add a little bit of that. I'm going to start mashing this. I like using a hand masher for uh, small quantities of stuff. There's no reason to get my blender out. I like to add a lot of pepper. Onion and cabbage is going in. Stir that around. I'm going to add some of the bacon. I'm, I'll hold some of it back for garnish. Okay, time for a taste. Check the seasoning. That is so good. It has been two and a half hours. My corned beef has reached 185 internal temp. See if I can get in there. There we go. Put it on my platter. I'm going to go ahead and tent that with some foil and scoop out these vegetables. Just use the original foil that I had on my pan. I'm just going to arrange the carrots in my serving platter. And then we'll strain this liquid. So our meat has rested and I've removed the carrots, put them in my little serving platter, strained my braising liquid. Now we're going to go ahead and cut against the grain. Oh wow, look at that, how beautiful those slices are. That is just gorgeous. These are going to make great sandwiches this week. Beautiful. All that's left to do is I put a little pat of butter on my potatoes, add some crumbled bacon on top, and then just finish with a little drizzle of the braising liquid. And there you have it, the perfect Guinness braised corned beef. The full recipe is in the description below. Thanks for watching. Ciao!